I'm telling you what. I, have I told y'all before that I love Thursday night? Y'all are, y'all are awesome. Y'all always bring it, and uh, it's, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? All right. So we're going to get started here in just a minute. My name is Shane. I'm the campus pastor at this location. We're honored that you came out to worship with us today. And if you're new to Life Springs Church, scan that QR code that's in the seat back in front of you. We want to connect with you. We got a gift for you, actually. Uh, whenever you leave today, you can go out to the lobby and at our guest services area. We got a gift for you. So make sure you grab that before you get out of here. And a couple quick things out the door straight ahead in this location. If you go out to the lobby and hang a right, we have the party room. We live stream from here to there. If you need to get up and move around anytime during the service, we have that available. We also have coffee, water out there in the lobby, and the restrooms are off the lobby there, too, if you need those at any time during the service. So, y'all good? Convince me. Y'all good? All right, let's, let's pray. Father, we praise you, and we thank you, God, for your mercy. We thank you, God, for your grace, and we thank you, God, that you chose us. Father, in, in all the time. You're everywhere in the times that we need you. You're always there. You said that you would never leave us. You would never forsake us. And that you will always be there for us. And God, I thank you for that. And Lord, as we go into worship today, I pray, Lord, that we would focus on you. That we would put you first in our life and that we would get you in the in the right order. Not that you need to be put in order, but that we would put you in the right order. God, family, church. Lord, let us wor- worship you today in spirit and in truth. And we give you the glory and we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen.
on, can we give God a hand clap of praise? Anybody in this room believe there's power in the name of Jesus? There's power in the name of Jesus. No matter what you've ever been through, there's power. Someone say power. There's power. No matter what you're going through now, there's what? There's power. And let me just go ahead and tell you a secret. No matter what you ever go through, there's power. I'm Jonathan. I'm the campus pastor at our summer location. And I just got to tell you, there's something special in this room. It's called the presence of God. And if you've ever experienced the presence of God, you know that something breaks when you're in the presence of God. Something changes when you're in the presence of God. And I want to read a verse to you about what happens when you realize who God really is. This is found in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. And here's what it says. And it says, may you have the power. Someone say power. The power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ through it is too great to understand. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness. Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty, someone say power. Power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Anyone here today needs something from God? Just go ahead and raise your hand. Maybe you've got a need in your family. Maybe it's something in your body. Maybe it's your finances. And you don't know where to turn, but let me just tell you, God's got everything you need. Somebody say amen. amen. So I want to pray for you with your hands raised. Father, I thank you for those who are in this room, those tuning in online those at a campus somewhere, those who are watching from prison cells right now. God, I pray that we would experience your power in our lives. Lord, there's nothing on this earth that can never compare to you. There's no financier that's as rich as you. There's no doctor who's as, he, as a healer as you. There's no one on this earth that's as strong as you. So God, we thank you. Lord, I pray that you'd meet everyone in this room right where they are that you would show them your ha. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. In fact, would you say that with me? One, two, three. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God another hand clap of praise. Y'all ready for something good? Look at your neighbor and say, that was good. Look at your other neighbor, the one you didn't want to look at. <laughs> Tell him it's about to get gooder. Now go ahead and have a seat. Check out these monitors. Hey, everyone. Whether at any of our locations or watching online, we're so glad you have joined us today. Welcome home. If you're attending the Sanford location, scan the QR code to get connected to the internet. At Life Springs, we are passionate about helping you discover the love of Jesus, develop the character of Jesus, and deliver the message of Jesus. There are many ways we seek to accomplish this goal. So let's take a look at some places to start. It all begins by connecting with people. God designed us for a relationship with Him and each other. We have a lot of opportunities for you to get connected. Here are just a few. To stay up to date with everything going on, text 411 to the number on the screen or go to lifesprings.online. If you're new here, we did not invite you here to take your money. We just want you to hear the greatest story ever told. In fact, if this is your first time, scan the QR code now and we have a free gift just for you. If you are part of our church family and call Life Springs Church your home, now is your opportunity to give. You can either give in person with giving envelopes, online at lifesprings.online, or through our Church Center app. Do you want to get involved or learn more about Life Springs Church? Then you should come to the Growth Track. The Growth Track teaches you more about the mission, vision, values, and beliefs of Life Springs. It creates opportunity to grow your faith, help you learn about your next steps, and get you connected with others. To learn more 
and sign up for the next growth track, scan this QR code, or go to lifesprings.online. To stay connected throughout the week, make sure to follow us on social media through Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Thank you again for joining us today. As we prepare for today's message, be sure to text sermon or prayer to 919-586-8900 for sermon notes or for prayer. Now let's check out this next video. Hit the beat. One more time. Approximately ten hours later. Where's my leaders at? I guess I need to get some new volunteers. Hey everybody, I just want to invite all of our middle and high schoolers out to our lock-in on August 4th at 7 p.m. Come out for a night full of excitement, games, fun, and a long time. And don't forget to wear your matching pajamas because there may or may not be a competition. There's Chris, get him! Hi, my name is Tom Ritter, and um, before I tell you a little bit about my role, let me tell you a little bit about the journey that got, that got me here. So as um, I've been getting close to retirement, I've been praying to God to open up a door, and I'm a firm believer in purpose. It's funny how um, when you begin to pray for things, how God does open up doors, you know? And Pastor Dale and I got to talking, and, uh, and as of Monday, I'm going to be the operations leader at Life Springs Church. My job is kind of HR, finance, facilities, maintenance and just really helping out in any way I can, um, you know, across all the campuses, uh, you know, to really allow our great pastors to do the great work they do every day. So a little bit more about me. My wife and I have had uh, about 12 homes and each one we flipped to differing degrees. And uh, so my hobbies are really home improvement, woodworking, and a little bit of golf. So to quote the great theologian, Red Green, if the women can't find you handsome, at least they can find you handy. Now that you know a little bit more about me, let's jump into the Bible and learn a little bit more about those who are unknown. Hey Amen, how's everyone doing today? Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. How we doing today? Hey man, how many of you glad that you're here and not stuck in DMV lines? Come on. 
All right, just five of you. Okay, all right. Well, hey, we are so glad you're here. I'm Jonathan. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm the campus pastor at our summer location. And I just want to take a moment and welcome those in this auditorium, those in the party room, those that are watching online, those at Western Harnett and Selma. Can we just take a moment and thank God for our whole church family? <laughs> Amen. It's been an incredible journey. How many of you like our new digs here in the new building? Isn't it awesome? Yeah. I know you riser folks love it. Riser folks, let me hear you. They really do exist up there, all right? Yeah. So, hey, we're so glad you're here. And real quick before I get into the message, I've got just a quick announcement I want to share with you. Uh, so Pastor Dale's not here. Right, I guess you noticed that, right? And uh, he's taking a study break for the month of July. And so we're going to uh, do this series unknown with some of our other preaching pastors. But we're getting ready for another series that he's actually studying for called Asking for a Friend. Anyone here ever had a big question in the Bible you just always wanted to ask a pastor directly? Anybody? We want to give you a chance to ask a question. And so you see it on the screen now. You can scan that QR code and, and get maybe your question answered. And there's been a lot of good ones. Like, for example, one person said, um, when do you know in the Bible that it's a literal thing versus a metaphorical thing? I thought that was pretty good, right? Someone asked about dinosaurs. How do they fit into the creation story? I, I think that's great. Somebody put, um, where do babies come from? <laughs> That was me. <laughs> you know why? Because my wife and I are having another baby. We're very excited. I'm in Selma, so I figured if they won't help me grow it, I'll grow it myself. Come on, somebody. No, I'm just kidding. They're doing an awesome job. So we're very excited about that. So hey, make sure that you scan that QR code and you type in a question and maybe your question will get answered. So if you got it, say got it. All right, well, you see it on the screen. We've been in a series called One, Two, Three and a Half and Three Quarters. What's it say? Unknown. That's right. We've been in a series called Unknown. And what we've been doing is trying to take some time over the next few weeks looking at people in the Bible who maybe aren't quite as known to you. Like, for example, I'm sure everyone in this room has probably heard about Moses. Am I right? Like, everyone knows Moses. How about Abraham? Have you heard about Abraham? Right? If you went to Sunday school, they had the song, Father Abraham. Right? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? But there's some people in the Bible who their name isn't known. And we wanted to take some time to talk about them. But let me just go ahead and tell you. If you get your name in the Bible, that's pretty good. Am I right? Some of you have a biblical name, but you didn't earn it. You know what I'm saying? So we've been doing this, and we're trying to help people understand, you and me, how we can take our place. Because everyone's got a purpose in the kingdom of God. Can I get an amen? Now, I want to go ahead and get into this thing, because last week, Pastor Brian did a phenomenal job preaching about vision. Did any of you guys enjoy that sermon? Let me hear you. Wasn't it good, everybody? Amen. Yeah, it was powerful. And he talked about Ananias and it was good. And so I'm kind of, I guess, building upon that a little because today I want to talk a little about lessons of how to win at life. Let me just go ahead and ask you, how many of you have ever felt like you just are not winning at life? Can I get an amen somebody, right? I mean, the struggle is real. And so I want to kind of set the scene and maybe you have experienced this. Where's my young adults in the room? Any young adults in the room? Let me hear you. All right. Now, let me just ask you young adults. Is adulting hard? Okay. Yes. Let me go ahead and ask some of the older folks. Shane, let me ask you, Shane. Is adulting hard, Shane? <laughs> He's still trying to get to adult age. You know what I mean? Let me ask you guys. Have you ever struggled with adulting? Yeah, it's hard. Like, for example, I remember going off to college, and uh, I was studying at a Bible school. I was going to be a pastor, and I just, I got so excited. I was there. I was studying about things of God. And let me just go ahead and tell you, I knew that when I graduated college, everybody was going to be calling my phone, asking for me to take their pulpit because I was just going to be that good. Like, I figured Billy Graham, Joel Osteen, Stephen Furtick, they were going to just retire because your boy JC got on stage. Right? 
and I get out of college, and nobody was calling my name. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to make money, because let me just tell you, mo money, mo problems, but you still need a little money. Can I get an amen? And so it was a struggle. And so I tried to figure it out. And then all of a sudden, bills start showing up. And then I was single and I was trying to get on the dating scene and find that woman, right? And, it, you know, it was just a hard thing. And, and then I did finally get a part-time job in ministry, but I had to have a full-time job in non-ministry to make it. Like, y'all ever been there? We had to have more than one job. Struggle's real, ain't it? And so I was working that thing. And let me just tell you, I was not setting the woods on fire. No matter what I tried to do, it really wasn't happening. Until about five years later, I finally got a full-time job in ministry. But let me just tell you, ministry is hard. It was hard. It was hard. I was working as a kid and youth pastor in them days, and it was hard. And then I finally found Rachel, my beautiful bride, and we got married. And I'm just going ahead and tell you, if you're single, ready to mingle, <laughs> marriage is hard. Come on, somebody. Am I right? And so we were going through that thing, and there were some days where I'm pretty sure she wanted to commit murder, <laughs> but she didn't. And then we had children, and anyone here have children? How many of you love your kids? But let me just ask you, somebody said sometimes, Lord Jesus, I hope your kids are in children's ministry right now. You know, ministry is hard. Having kids is hard. Work, raising kids is hard, isn't it, somebody? Especially nowadays. And so here's my question to you. As we get ready to talk about what does it mean to win at life, let me just ask you. How many, have any of you ever felt like you're on the struggle bus? Anyone feel like you were on the struggle bus today? Like you ever had that experience when what happens to you is you're not only on the struggle bus, you own the struggle bus and you're the bus driver. Like everything seems to be going wrong. Everything that you want to accomplish in life doesn't seem to happen. It feels like you're not winning. So what I want to do is I want to help you. Because if you're like me, you want to win. Someone say, I want to win. I want to win. That, that's the name of this sermon. We're going to talk about that. And I want to be clear as I get ready to talk about this. When I say success... In this sermon, I'm not necessarily talking about becoming the richest person. Although what I'm going to preach will most likely help you in your finances. I'm not necessarily saying that with this, you're going to raise perfect kids. Although some of the stuff we're going to talk about is going to help you be a better parent. Y'all tracking with me, so say yes. What I want to do today is I want to talk about how you can win at having what God calls an abundant life. Anyone ever wanted to have some blessings from God where you just want God to work in your life and work things out? And I want you to understand that this sermon, what's going to happen for you is you're going to be able to walk out with a well-balanced life where you feel disciplined and able to rock and roll so that when you wake up tomorrow, you can say, today's a good day. I may not have it all together, but I trust God. And with God's help, I'm going to be all right. If you got it, say got it. Now, here's the thing. A lot of times in life, in the areas of our lives we struggle in, sometimes you might be good at one, but you struggle in another. You ever notice that? You might be really good with your kids, but sometimes marriage gets hard. Or, or maybe you're really good at finances, but you're not really sure about this whole thing about Jesus. Like, sometimes you feel like a winner in one, let's be honest, a loser in another. So I want to help you today. And so this is your Life Springs Church social media moment. We've had this first years ago. Here's what it says. It says, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will what? They will succeed. I want you to take a picture of that. Post it on Facelift and Snap Neck and Tic Tac Toe, whatever you got. Because the world needs to know that when you trust God and you commit your actions to the Lord, your plans, they're going what? They're going to? They're going, to come, they're going to succeed. And so today, I want to talk about a man in the Bible that you probably have never heard of. A man who was a mighty warrior that very few sermons were ever written about. And this guy is named Benaiah. Would you say Benaiah? Now, Benaiah only actually had four verses written about him in the Bible. Y'all thinking, oh, we're going to get out early tonight. 
Nah, <laughs> we ain't going to get out too early, but we're going to have some fun, all right? So here's the deal. Benaiah, he was bad to the bones. You ever met somebody who's just hardcore? Benaiah is that guy. And so Benaiah, the story about him takes place in the Old Testament, the first half of the Bible, in a book called 2 Samuel. And Benaiah, he was one of David's mighty warriors. In fact, David, who's the king of Israel, he was the commander of the army, and he had some guys that he put them in, kind of like his superheroes. They were like the rangers, if you will. They were hardcore. And he had, he had a group, he called them David's mighty men and these guys they would go to battle first and then the rest of the soldiers would come in after they were intense they fought alongside David and they had a lot of wins and they really propelled him if you will to the heights that he was and this group of people was broken into two categories he had the first group was called the three now let me just ask you how many people do you think were in the group called the three? You guys are good. <laughs> now, he had another group called the 30. So together, these were the mighty warriors. How many do you think were in the group of 30? Now, I was actually 34. Math is hard. <laughs> and so this group had 37 total people who were David's mighty warriors. And in the group of 30, we meet Benaiah. And Benaiah was so intense, so awesome, that he was honored above the rest of the 34. And so that's in which we meet Benaiah. So David, he's getting near the end of his life. He's sharing the story of the mighty warriors. And this is what he writes about Benaiah. It's found in 2 Samuel chapter 23. And here's what it says. You ready? It says, there was also Benaiah, son of Starts with a J. <laughs> a valiant warrior from Kabzeel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Next verse. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. Once, armed only with a club, he killed an imposing Egyptian warrior who was armed with a spear. Benaiah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. Deeds like these made Benaiah as famous as the three mightiest warriors. Last verse, you ready? He was what he was more honored than the other members of the 30, though he was not one of the three. And then David made him who he made him? Captain of his bodyguard. Now I told you Benaiah was bad, won't he? Could you imagine this guy? He was straight gangster. I mean, he was tough. He was like the Chuck Norris of his day. In fact, he could chew metal nails and spit out paper clips. <laughs> Benaiah, he could win a game of Connect Four with just three moves. In fact, the dark was scared of Benaiah. I mean, you know what I'm saying, right? This guy was hardcore. And so Benaiah, he was a winner. Now, I asked you earlier, anybody wish that you could be a winner? Somebody say, I want to win. That's it. I want to win too. So what I want to do is take his story and give you some keys on how to win at life. So here's the first one. If you're ready, say ready. ready. All right. Keys to winning at life. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to examine your influencers. You've got to examine your influencers. See, David and his mighty men, they were all winners. I'm sure they were committed to each other. They were disciplined. They were dedicated. They probably got up every day and worked out. They ate good. They probably looked a little like me. Okay, maybe not. All right, move on. They were hardcore, right? These guys were tough, and they spent time together. They ate together. They prayed together. They probably learned directly from David about how to succeed and about life and how to be a godly leader. In fact, Benaiah was even, uh, his whole family was close to David. His father was high up in David's army, and Benaiah's son was also in the army of David. These guys had it together. They did everything together. In fact, just think for a second. What would it be like to live in a time where you hung out with the man that God said was a man after his own heart? 
to be friends with a guy like David. I guarantee you that Benaiah was influenced by David, and that's part of why he was successful. See, here's the deal. He got in to the presence of the king. And I want to say something to you. You have access to the presence of the king of kings, and his name is Jesus. And when you get into the presence of the king of kings, there ain't no chance for you but to win. Because when God's on your side, the Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible says, no weapon formed against me will prosper. I'll keep going till someone says amen. The Bible says a lot about what it means to be a winner in God's family. Y'all tracking? You've got to recognize that you have to get into the presence of the King of Kings. And here's the next thing. For some of you, you need to look at who is influencing your life. Let me just ask you. Do you have anybody in your family or in your circle of friends that they just seem to win all the time? You got someone like that? Like, do you have someone, though, in your family that they challenge you to be better? Do you have anyone in your circle of friends that they encourage you to keep pressing when you feel like quitting? Who they'll say to you that you need to not give in and not give up. And they'll give you godly advice rather than tell you what you want to hear. Do you have anyone in your family, in your friends, in your life who will tell you when you're wrong when you really are wrong? Those are the kind of people You've got to have. Because if you don't have someone like that in your circle, in your corner, in your ring, you're going to find it harder to win at life. Does that make sense to anybody? You've got to have people that are winners in your life. You can't expect to win when everyone else around you is a loser. Right? You've got to find people who are good. People who have it together. Now let me just go ahead and tell you. You probably won't find somebody who's got everything together, right? But you can find people that have at least one thing together. And if you don't, what's going to happen is you're probably going to fail in that very area. In fact, let me show you a verse. You see it on the screen. It's Proverbs 13, 20. It says, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Let me just ask you, how many have ever walked with the wise and you felt pretty good? Right? Let me ask you this question. How many ever hung out with a fool <laughs> and you got in trouble? Right? Like some of us, probably the biggest regrets in our lives happen because not just what we were doing, but who we were doing it with. Am I right? And whenever you think about your life, if you find yourself constantly in an environment where you're hang hanging around fools, you're probably going to get in trouble. So let me just ask you, let's be honest. How many of you have some people in your life right now that you would say, they're probably getting me in trouble? Okay, now don't look at them, right? But if you've got somebody in your life, in your circle that's messing you up, you might need to find some new friends. And here, let me just tell you, at Life Springs Church, we want to help you. Maybe, maybe you're a teenager and you feel like there's just nobody at your school that's going to help you out. Because the Bible says, walk with the wise and become wise. You know what you should do? Consider going to teen group. We've got teen group at Western Harnett and right here in Sanford. Maybe you're a young adult. You need to get around some other young adults that, that love God. So maybe you need to go to the bridge. Maybe you're single. <laughs> you can find yourself a man or a woman at the bridge. Come on, somebody. You need to find some people who are godly. And if you're an adult, let me just tell you, one of the greatest places you can find good people to be around is in small group. Anybody in this room have a small group that you're a part of? You like your small group? Have you ever noticed that your small group seems to help you and shape you? And sometimes they'll even tell you when you did something wrong, right? Well, we're having sign-ups for small groups beginning this weekend. And if you scan that code, you can sign up. There's a lot of great groups. We've got two options. One is about the book of Haggai. There's a lot of groups doing that. And that's a study from an Old Testament book of the Bible. And then there's another study called Bridges, where you'll learn how to make godly habits. That'll take you from where you are to where you always wanted to be. You've got to find some new friends. You've got to get into a circle of friends that'll help you. Dave Ramsey, he's a financial guru, and, and he says that if you want to be better at finances, 
you got to hang around people who are good at finances. He says, if you want to have a better marriage, you got to have, hang around people who have a pretty good looking marriage. Like you got to get into an environment where you allow your inner circle of friends to help determine your level of success. If you're hanging around fools, you're just going to get in trouble. If you got it, say got it. Now, here's number two. Not only do you have to examine your influencers, but number two, you got to face your fears. Would you say face your fears? Let me just ask you, any of you here willing to admit that you're scared of something? Right? Here's one of the things I've noticed. Anybody here scared of snakes? Right? Okay. Anyone here scared of spiders? Have you ever noticed that most times you're either scared of spiders or you're scared of snakes, but rarely are they scared of both? And many times, the people who are scared of spiders make fun of the people who are scared of snakes. But let me just tell you, a snake can bite you and kill you. A spider, I guess, can too, but they're that big and you can squash it. <laughs> I'm scared of snakes. Years ago, I uh, was, was hanging out with Rachel and we were dating and she lives in the country near a farm or on a farm. And uh, there's a lake right there, a little pond, whatever. And um, she would get copperheads all around her house. Now, I didn't know that when we started dating because if I had, it might have changed some things in my life. <laughs> but one day we're hanging out. I'm at her parents' house. We had a party that night for someone's birthday, and I'm leaving. It's kind of, you know, it's dark, and I'm leaving, and she's walking me out to my car, and right by my car is a copperhead going like this. I'm pretty sure that thing was ready to bite me and eat me. I mean, you know what I'm saying, right? And it was scary. I saw that thing, and I said, Rachel, go get somebody. Now, I was scared. I knew she was scared of spiders, she knew I was scared of snakes. You know what this girl did? She left me <laughs> with the snake by my car. And when I turned around, you know what happened? She had a hoe in her hand and she said, I am somebody. <laughs> Guys, if you're scared of snakes, find you a woman who ain't. <laughs> she took that hoe. She whacked that thing and chopped it in half and you know what happened she made fun of me because the snake was that big <laughs> but you know what my mama said she said the smaller the snake the worse the bite so I don't care I'm running baby right I was scared I was afraid of that thing now let me ask you anyone here afraid of something that's more scary than a snake like being afraid to fail at life being afraid to not watch your kids grow up in the godly ways. Being afraid to lose your marriage. See, snakes are scary, am I right? Spiders are scary. But when you don't feel like you're winning at the things that matter in life, boy, it gets hard. Benaiah, he had to face his fears. I want you to see this verse again. You've already seen it, but I want you to see it in the new light. It said on, in chapter 23, verse 21, it says, Another time. On a snowy day, he what he he chased a lion down into a a pit, and what he do to that lion he he killed it. Could you imagine this situation? What it would have been like? Benaiah, on a snowy day, goes into a pit to kill it. Now, I don't know why he went into that pit. I don't know why he wanted to kill that lion. I don't know if it was like terrorizing the people around. I don't know if he had just had a bad day and wanted to take it out on something. But for whatever reason, Benaiah, on a snowy day, starts plunging through. And I don't know what it was like, but I'm going to use my imagination. Is that okay, everybody? Just say yes, because I'm going to. Is that all right? <laughs> I can imagine that this thing was thick. This, have you ever been through a thick snow and it's hard? You got to get your foot up, right? You know what I'm talking about? And he's plowing through it and it's a snowy day and he's trying to find that lion and he sees some footprints going into a pit. And if I were him, I'd have ran because now this lion is enclosed in a dark area and he's cornered. And a lion, he don't play when he feels trapped. But Benaiah, he goes through that spot. He goes down into that pit and he kills that lion. Told you he was bad, won't he? He's hardcore. He's tough. But you know why I think God put that in the Bible? I believe it's because for some of us, it's time to face our fears. 
I believe for some of us, what we've got to do is recognize that there's an enemy of our soul. And the Bible says he prowls around like a roaring lion seeking who he might devour. For the enemy comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I think it's time for somebody to face your fears and say, Satan, I know life is hard. I may not make it. Everyone around me is making fun of me. Things going on ain't working right. But I'm going to go down into that pit and I'm going to kill the enemy he won't have my kids he won't have my marriage he won't have my finances I ain't gonna back down because I'm a child of God you gotta face your fears because here's the deal the devil's trying to mess up your marriage and you know it the devil's trying to mess with your kids we've never seen a generation confused like we have because the enemy's trying to mess it up The devil's trying to mess up all your relationships. So it's time to say, Satan, your time is up. I'm not going to be afraid. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my kids. I'm pressing on because I won't live in fear. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and anyone else know what it says? A sound mind. The Bible's very clear. We've got to press on. Someone say, I'm pressing on. You got to press on because when you do, that's when you win. If you got it, say got it. So here they are. Number one, you've got to make sure that you examine your influencers. What's number two? You got to what? You got to face your fears. Then number three, you got to seize your opportunities. You got to seize your opportunities. See, I'm pretty sure that Benaiah... If you'd be honest with yourself, you would say, man, he really did seize his opportunities. He fought alongside David. He was a decorated soldier. He had a lot of accolades. You've seen him already, but look at the last verse there, verses 22 and 23. Here's what it says. It says, deeds like these made Benaiah as famous as the three mightiest warriors. He was what he was. Let's say that again. He was more honored than the other members of the 30. Though he was not one of the three, and David made him captain of his bodyguard. See, what it said was that he was more honored. Anyone could have killed the champions of Moab. Anyone could have faced their fears and taken out that lion. Anybody could have gone against that huge Egyptian and defeated him in the middle of a struggle. But Benaiah is the one who did it. Benaiah is the one who seized the right opportunities. He didn't play it safe. He didn't run. He just trusted God and did what God asked of him. He chose just to do the next right thing and God blessed him for it. See, here's what I want to say to you. For you, it's time. It's time to seize your opportunities. It's time to start that business. It's time to let go of that abusive relationship. It's time to go back to school. It's time for some of you to go back home to your spouse. It's time to talk and have that tough conversation with your kids. It's time to face your fears. You don't know what's going to happen next, but it's time. Anyone understand what I'm talking about? It's time. See, here's what I'm saying. In my life, I've had a lot of opportunities. I've preached in big churches. I've preached in small churches. I've preached in in churches where they spoke Spanish. I've preached in churches where they spoke Tagalog, Philippines. I've been all over the place. And you know what I've learned? If God gives me an opportunity, I'm going to walk through it. Because I don't know what's going to happen on the other side. But if God gives it to me, I want to take it. Now, I want to tell you this too. Not all opportunities that I've been given are all bad. Also, not all the opportunities are always good. And sometimes the opportunity might be good, but there's another one that's better. The same is true for you. Not every opportunity that you get is going to be good. You got to know which ones to take. Not every opportunity is going to be bad. And sometimes you're going to have to choose between a good one and a better one. But you got to seize the opportunities. For you to succeed, for you to win, You're going to have to get comfortable in the process. Let me just explain it like this. When you're ready to step forward and to trust God to win at life, 
You're excited. You're going to start that business. You're going to go to school. For some of you feel called to ministry and you can't wait to rise to the occasion. But let me just tell you, there's two things you got to keep in mind. There's what I call the process and there's the position. And a lot of times, people want to bypass the process to get to the position. They don't want to go through the process of starting the business. They just want to see the blessing from it. They don't want to go through the process of going to school. They just want the diploma. They don't want to go through the process of raising those kids. They just want to see them grow up right. Y'all tracking with me? But if you don't go through the process, you won't win at life. There's a process and there's a position. And when you go through the process... That's when God shapes you to be a winner. See, here's the deal. Some people, they give up too quickly. Some people say, this is too hard. I'm giving up. I can't do it. But I want you to know that there is no place for entitlement when you're trying to win at life. You've got to serve your way into that position. And it's done by taking the opportunities that are right that God gives for you. How many understand what I'm talking about? Hold your hands good and high. See, I think there's a generation, I'm not just talking about young people, but just in general. There's a generation that doesn't want to go through the process. They don't want to see the tough days. They don't want to go through the heartbreaks. They don't want to go through those tough times. But let's be honest. How many of you would say, I've learned enough in my failures, sometimes more than in my successes, right? So here they are one more time on the screen. If you want to win at life, Number one, you've got to examine your influencers. Who is in your inner circle that is shaping you for good or bad? You've got to face your fears. What are the things that you're not ready to start because you're afraid to begin? And number three, you've got to seize your opportunities. You've got to seize your opportunities. I found this verse in preparation for today that I thought was so fitting that it just ties all these together. And it's found in Psalm Chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Here's what it says. It says, happy are those who don't listen to the wicked, the influencers, who don't go where sinners go, who don't do what evil people do. They love the Lord's teachings and they think about those teachings day and night. They are strong like a tree planted by a river. The tree produces fruit in season and its leaves don't die. Read that last part with me. One, two, three. Everything they do will succeed. How many wish you could succeed at everything you do? God's wanting to do that with you. God has a plan for you. And he's not trying to hide it from you. You just got to come to the place where you say, God, I know this is going to be hard, but I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to look at my circle of friends And choose who needs to be out of the circle and who I need to put into the circle. God, I'm willing to face my fears. But will you help me? God, I'm looking for opportunities. And I'll take them as they come. In other words, God, here I am. For some of you, maybe you've not given your life to God. So the first thing you really need to do is say, here I am, God. Come into my life. For others of you, if you're honest with yourself, God doesn't have first place in your life. And honestly, that might be the thing that you need to fix today that would help you win at life. How many understand this message? Hold your hands good and high. I want to pray for you. We're going to have some time here at the altar. So if you would, maybe would you stand so we could get ready in a posture to hear from God? Maybe with every head bowed and every eye closed. You're here in this room. And you would say, Jonathan, you're right. I really don't know Jesus. I really don't have a relationship with him but I want to. If that's you, would you raise your hand so I could pray for you? Yeah, I see your hand. 
Is he one? Hey, can we thank God for the one who's raised their hand? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's just pray about that. In fact, I, I want to invite everybody to do this so no one feels left out. We're family. Just say, God, forgive me of my sins. Make me a new creation. And help me to live like your son. If you said that prayer, you're just as much a Christian as anybody. Now, for everyone in the room, maybe you're here and you would say, I know some people I need to break free from. I know there's some fears that I need to overcome. I know it's time to step into my season and seize those opportunities. It's time to win. I want to win. If that's you, would you raise your hand so I could pray for you? Yeah. I see your hands all over. Yep, 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 yep. I see your hands. I see your hands. Father, I thank you for those with hands raised who say it is time. It's time to change my inner circle. It's time to change those who have influence over me. It's time for me to step out in faith and not cover from fear. It's time for me to seize those opportunities in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you'd give them the strength to do it. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord. I pray that we would overcome the obstacles that would try to make us stop from moving forward and trusting you. And Lord, I pray blessings on those who are ready to win in Jesus' name. We're going to spend some time here singing a song, and I'm going to invite you. There's something powerful when you spend time at the altar. So I'm going to invite my altar workers to come to the front and they're going to be here to pray with you and maybe you want to engage with them and maybe something's going on in your life that's tied to this sermon or something different you want to pray with them. Or maybe you just want to get alone, you and God, and just spend time at the altar. That's okay too. But we're going to sing this song and I'm going to invite you to come to this altar and watch God move. So let's do this together. More, God can do more in five minutes than I can in 40 of preaching. He's at this altar. Just sing this to God. to see.
Thank you guys for watching with us. We hope you heard from God today. Remember, don't forget to scan the QR code so that we can give you your free gift. And again, don't forget to text 411 to stay up to date on all that's happening at Life Springs Church. And Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this wonderful service today, for your presence with us. We pray that everyone watching this got something from the service that they felt your presence and that they will leave here feeling you with them and knowing of your love for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week.